You know, when you look at a stick and ball sport or anything else, you have one winner, you have one loser. You know, when we go Saturday night and there's 40 small blocks, there's one winner and there's 39 losers. Most cases, you're going to be happy if you came out of there with, with five wins and you raced 40 times that year. You'd say, wow, what a great percentage. I won every eight times I went out. That's excellent. But most of the rest of the, the regular people will win one or two races in the, in the 25 or 30 that they race. That'll humble you up quick. Many say legends aren't born, they're made. Made from nail-biting moments. Side by side with McCready, Hearn takes over the lead, the place goes berserk. Heroic victories and heartbreaking defeats. Tim McCready finishes second here today, but a great run. Countless drivers with extraordinary talent have made their way through Orange County. There were so many good races with Snyder, Strupp, Chuck Lagoon, Spud Murphy, Harry North, Will Cagle, Billy Osmond, Jackie Evans, Rags Carter, Barefoot Bob McCready, Brett, Danny, Buzzy Rudiman, Jeff Hetzler, Wayne Rudiman. I mean, I can keep on going. There were so many good drivers that came through here. The pool of talented drivers at OCFS runs deep with so many deserving to be recognized. Here are a few who have jumped out as fan favorites over the years. Jimmy Horton, a lifelong fierce competitor, has notably won a track championship three times, spanning five decades. Jimmy Horton knows what's inside of his shocks. He knows every tube that's in his frame. He knows what, what everything is, uh, is all about from the bottom up and knows how to make them go. Horton is a guy that's gonna be, gonna be technical. Jeff Hetzler, another veteran driver, continues to race to this day with over 50 modified wins. Oh, he's always been a competitor. Jeff is very good and he's very knowledgeable. Jeff, you always do well when the stakes are high here in Middletown. Jeff Hetzler is going to try to roll this car right under the checkered flag in first place tonight. With multiple track championships and an Eastern States win under his belt, Jerry Higby Jr. is a threat in any race. Jerry, you know, obviously I've known him a long, long time in the sport. He's just, you know, one of those contenders every time you go to Middletown. At over 70 years of age, Richie Urick still competes every Saturday night. Richie's always been at the top of his game. He's always been a top driver here. He's got amazing longevity to still be as competitive as he is uh, to this day. Checkered flag is out. Richie Urick takes home the 27th annual Eastern States 200. Despite a relatively short career in the Northeast, Wayne Rudiman made a name for himself as a skillful driver. He was a little more of a wild child than Buzzy. My brother Wayne is one of the hardest ones to beat I've ever run against. <laughs> I don't know if I ever beat him or not, but... Jackie Evans was on the fast track to be one of the greatest drivers of all time. Jackie Evans won nine features two years in a row at Middletown. Unfortunately, he passed in 1970. Bob Malzahn would win all over the East Coast, easily made racing into a career. Bob Malzahn, he won his share of races. He stayed out of trouble and drove around trouble. Bobby Botcher was a fan favorite of his time. Botcher was always a good racer. He put a wheel on you if he had it and he wanted to win, and otherwise he was, he was a clean guy and pretty well liked by everybody. Each driver has their own distinct personality. Having an impeccable reputation, this driver was known as, well, a gentleman. Budsy was the fans' favorite. Truly adored among racers and fans alike, Buzzy Rudiman had a unique approach to racing. He was the kind of guy, if you went and put him to the back, he would be a charger. He's the cleanest driver. Buzzy was the kind of guy that, if you were a kid and went down in the pits after the race, he would hang around and talk to you. He'd sign whatever you want. He was honored in the 1997 Northeast Dirt Modified Hall of Fame and the Eastern Motorsport Press Association Hall of Fame in 2006. Rivaling Buzzy and one of the more controversial drivers to race in Middletown was Gary Ballou. 
Gary was known for testing the rules and doing whatever it took to win. And the officials here made a mistake by not having a set of rules that would not allow a car like Gary's. Gary proved his might with 29 wins in only five years during his career at Middletown. I'm a little on the hyper side and probably a little bit on the wild side I was. Maybe still a little bit, I don't know. Gary Blue is the one that taught me what I wanted my program to look like. He could have been an Indy driver, a Daytona driver. He had the potential. Gary was a hell of a driver. Tying Gary Ballou with 29 wins at Middletown is another legend, the late Carl Fuzzy Van Horn. Van Horn prided himself in building his own modifieds, even after store-bought cars came into vogue. He was known to be a, quote, heavyweight, or a tough racer that some would find controversial, while others would find extremely entertaining. He was inducted into the Northeast Dirt Modified Hall of Fame in 2008 and the Eastern Motorsports Press Association Hall of Fame in 2009. They used to say, who's going to stop Ray Brown at Middletown? Ray Brown, for sure. He, he, he was a very uh, good driver at that time. Ray Zero Brown was known for his flexibility and that he can drive anything well. He carries the sixth most wins at Middletown with 43. Impressive for just an eight-year run of the hard clay from 1951 to 1959. He has since been inducted into the 2019 Northeast Dirt Modified Hall of Fame. Known as the doctor, Danny Johnson has the hearts of Middletown fans. One of the winningest drivers in dirt track history, Danny has accumulated many of his wins at Orange County. Danny only knows how to go fast. I mean, he races very hard. Since I was a kid at Ransomville and watched him jump around in different rides, it's been fun to watch. Over the years, I've watched Danny Johnson get in a number of cars, cars that were good, cars that were just not good at all, never qualified, and he always manages to find a way to come to the front. Thanks to his six-time Eastern States wins and his aggressive driving style, Danny is still one of the most feared drivers at Middletown and has recently been inducted into the Northeast Dirt Modified Hall of Fame. Danny knows he has to make his move, and he does. Lap number 55. One of the most accomplished drivers in dirt track modified stock car racing history, Will Kegel was known for his unique ways of getting the mechanical and mental edge on his competition. Kegel was a different kind of guy. He was slick. Kegel was a winner, wanted to be a winner and he would do everything to win. He is known for using techniques to distract other drivers, such as tying a rag to his race car. He's an aggressive driver. He likes to be on the throttle. He's going to give you his all every lap. He, you know, he gets up on the wheel and he drives hard. Kegel is ranked fifth in wins at OCFS with 47. He eventually became the general manager at Orange County from 1986 through 1997. And he tremendously influenced the sport from behind the desk rather than behind the wheel. We began with the fans at Orange County, this love-hate thing, where I won enough races to where you couldn't be anywhere in the middle. You either had to hate me or love me. Of the many OCFS legends, none have come close to one man's victory count. But up front, it was all Brett Hearn. Mark Flurry finished second. Pouch was third. Jack Johnson fourth. Brett Hearn has the most wins and the most championships between Eastern States and point titles. As far as I'm concerned, he's the best that's ever sat in one of these cars. How many wins? I mean, I don't even exactly know the, the exact number. With over 900 wins and 79 track championships, frequent visits to Victory Lane made him loved or hated by the fans. Brett Hearn wins the Conquest 97! You can't dismiss his talent, and you can't say Orange County without thinking of Brett Hearn. He was an excellent driver, would never take anything away from the guy, but... Uh, I think as far as raw talent, I'd definitely pick Snyder. Way before Brett Hearn ever stepped foot in the pits, lived and reigned Frankie Schneider. I knew Frankie Schneider was good back in that day. I used to watch him go around the track all the time. He raced from 1950 to 1972, and within those years won 58 races at Middletown. Frankie Schneider. Naturally, he'd be on my list as one of the greatest modified racers. One of the most notable achievements was in 1963, when Frankie Schneider won a points championship at four different tracks. Dirt modified racing is defined by legends, 
and at Orange County, their stories have inspired a new wave of racers with legendary potential. There is an interesting group of young guys out racing now that are diehard racers. Anthony Priego, he's doing, you know, he's coming up pretty good. I was lucky enough to work with uh, Stuart Friesen for, for a while there. The talent he has as a driver, in my eyes, is above everybody else. Crummel, same thing. Crummel is like, he's different than the rest. You know, when he's working on that car, he doesn't want you in it. He wants to do it. Nothing but respect for him. Watching Allison go out there racing is like, it's awesome. Out of 30 cars, she's like top five fastest. This is incredible. And I know Matt Shepard. He went through college on, and he's got an engineering degree. He's no fool. It's definitely a pressure to run up there with Shepard. This guy is really good. There are many talented drivers who have raced to hard clay over the years. The list continues to grow. Legends aren't born, they are made. Legacies aren't entitled, they are earned. And one thing is certain, you will always find the best of the best racing at Orange County Fair Speedway.